Scott Brown here. If you're not really into nail guns, you might want to skip today's episode. It may not be exciting for you. But if you are into nail guns, welcome to another exciting episode. Couldn't fit the airbow in the frame. <laughs> you get the point, you get the point. And this is my top down system. A clamp and a tripod. Alright, nail guns. Now the nail guns I'm going to go through today are the ones that I own and they're all cordless nail guns. I've only ever owned cordless nail guns and we might as well start with the airbow. Now if you have been watching my channel for a while now you'll know all about the airbow and if you happen to have missed it, it's basically a framing gun that takes air power only. No gas cartridges, no batteries, just a big fat air tank here. It's kind of like a paintball gun but for nails. This thing has a lot of positives and it has some drawbacks as well. Basically it's super quiet which I love. You don't really have to wear earmuffs. The air just drives the nail in and you know it doesn't jolt your elbow back. And you don't have to worry about gas, that's a big one. But the drawbacks would be you need to fill this thing up. So you have to carry an air compressor around or have it somewhere where you can get the gun filled up. Because if you use this thing all day, you're likely to need to fill it up at the end of it. Another thing I really like about this gun is their adjustment system. Look at that, that's how you adjust the depth. Very cool, and it's got a good claw on the end of it too for framing. That really digs into the uh, digs into the timber there. Although it doesn't, it's not splayed out. It's very vertical, and sometimes when you're going on a 45 degree angle, you don't quite catch the timber, and you can slip basically. If you can figure out a place for an air compressor in your setup, uh, this could be a good option for framing. But one little gripe that I have is that this is the framing gun, and the next gun is the concrete gun. Oh my gosh, the power. But there's no finishing gun. I don't know what it's like in your country, but here in New Zealand, the main nail guns that builders have is a framing gun and a finishing gun. That's the combo. This is probably the most popular framing gun in New Zealand, the Passload framing gun. Most builders have these, and I've been building for 15 years, and my first nail gun was a Passload. And up until very recently, I've been using password framing nailers. Yeah, this is my second. And the only reason I replaced it is because the first one got stolen out of my van. These things are pretty well tested. They're a good weight, super portable. They take gas canisters, which means that you have to make sure that you stay on top of maintenance. You know, if you let this thing get too dirty, it tends to clog up and misfire. Uh, they come with detachable tips as well. So you can get rubber tips. You get rubber tips like this that go onto the nail gun. If you're working on like an outside timber wall that is a finished product, or decking or something, you can use this rubber tips so you don't make dents with the sharp tip that the gun comes with. And also the tip that the gun does come with is good for framing, look at that. This is what I was talking about before with the airbow tip, it's not splayed out on the sides. So when you're nailing on a 45 degree angle, this digs in and doesn't slip. And uh, because they're so popular here and because they're so widespread, you get these for a good price. You can get a pair of these for $1,400 probably, New Zealand, which is good. New Zealand's an expensive country to live in. And when I say pair, I mean the framer and the finisher. It's a bit loud out there. Let's just go this way again. This is the straight 16 gauge pass load bratting nailer. Back to my point about combinations, this and the framing gun has been my combination since I started building. And as you can see, it's uh, been battered and bruised over the years. Take 16 gauge nails and your gas canister in the back here. And because I've had it for so long, it takes the longest style batteries and they go right here. This is a good finishing gun if you stay on top of maintenance, which is where I've fallen short. Pretty much every year, you either have to pull it apart and spray all the inside chamber and the filter on the back here. I can smell the gas on it right now. And the inevitable dust and dirt that you're exposed to when you're on a building site kind of grips to the gas residue that's, whew, that's in there right now. And it clogs up the gun. If you don't clean it out every year or, or pay somebody to do so, this thing stops firing. But when you do fire it and it does work, it's good. <laughs> 
Okay. How many guys does it take to nail a boxing on? <laughs> and it's light, very light, which is great. But it's loud, which is not so great. You definitely have to wear earmuffs when you're using this. Now that takes me to the Hikoki straight finish bradder. This is the 18 gauge, thinner nails. It's kind of opposite to your intuition, or at least mine. The higher the number, the thinner the nail. So the 16 gauge nails are probably like a one point, I've got to Google it. So 16 gauge nails are 1.29 millimeters and 18 gauge nails are 1.02 millimeters. So they're thinner. Now what good is a thinner nail? Well, if you're doing finishing work, it means the holes that your nails leave behind are smaller and therefore they can be filled easier. And also you can do hidden nailing, which is the reason I bought this in the first place. It's definitely heavier than the pass load, but it doesn't have the sort of uh, um, deal breaking weight that the Hikoki framing gun has, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, it's a good weight and it doesn't have the problem of gas. It doesn't take gas cartridges. It's battery only. So, so aside from nails, why did I buy this? I bought this for that plywood feature wall because I knew I'd be nailing into the rebates. I'm gonna do one up in here. Old, uh... okay. So we're, we're happy everywhere. Yep. Pretty much. Happy everywhere, go. Sweet. Just... If you can get one right on the top, it'd be great. So I wanted a thinner nail to sort of sneak in there. Uh, I recently used this on that oak flooring that we put down. Yesterday we finished that. Uh, the thing about that flooring is it wasn't a clipped together floor so you had to keep the boards locked into each other. You, you couldn't rely on the boards themselves doing it. So this was great for pinning it into place while the glue sets. It's just a real handy finishing gun and it's too soon to tell for me but I'm hoping that the lack of gas cartridges means less maintenance. And obviously if you're already on the Hikoki, Hitachi, Matavo line this would be a no-brainer for you. I both love and loathe the nozzle on this thing though. See that? It's very good for firing nails and seeing exactly where you're nailing. It's got a little arrow there so you know exactly where the nail's going to go. But this rubber tip comes off far too easily. This is already my second one. I don't know what happened to the first one. I mean it's $4 but I might glue this on. And then there is the Hikoki Framer or Hitachi depending what country you're in. They're doing a transition, I, I, I don't know. This thing is really heavy. That's the thing that catches a lot of people by surprise. They pick this up and go, oh my gosh, because they're used to the pass load or other framing nailers. And yeah, no question, this thing's heavy. And that's probably the reason I don't use it as much as I thought I would. But with that weight comes a lot of power. This thing is great for firing through native timbers here in New Zealand. And I've really enjoyed it for that. We were using it on a floor in Hearn Bay that on a house that was over 100 years old and this thing just fired the nails through. <laughs> what about the weight difference? Zero. So the Hikoki is great for power if you can put up with that weight. It also has probably the best sound effect that a nail gun has if that's something you're into. I don't know. The uh, nozzle of the nail gun, if you want to call it that, could definitely be improved. These claws don't really dig in, especially when you're nailing on an angle similar to the airbow there. The depth adjustment is great, you just wind this. And um, it's battery powered, which is great. If you can't fit an air compressor into your life, I'm sure you can fit a battery charger. Again, if you're on Hikoki, Hitachi, this is a bit of a no-brainer for you. So, what do I choose? I'm sure you've guessed it already. I like the airbow for framing, and I like the Hikoki for finishing. I'm even contemplating the Hikoki 15 gauge because I'm totally over my pass load. <laughs> Another bonus to having like a non-gas nail gun is that you can buy non-gas boxes of nails. Like these ones here. And they're a heck of a lot cheaper compared to buying nails that have the gas cartridges in them. If you're doing large projects with lots of framing, it's much more cost effective. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what combination of nail guns you use and why. And, uh, and I'll see you in the next exciting Episode of Scott Brown Carpentry. <laughs> Cameron. And Pato. So uh, Cameron, what's your take on nail guns? What's your combo of choice? Ah. Uh, the Hikoki? 
-huh. Yeah. And I got a few Pezzlers around, but I don't have the airboat, and I didn't get, you know, didn't get to try so. <laughs> so you never spill them. <laughs> you got to try. You got yeah, to I got to try. <laughs> <laughs> messing with you. I'll let you borrow. Um, would you go like pass load finishing, pass load framing, or Hikoki finishing, or a combination? I think I don't think Hikoki does the angle bread at the moment. That's the they do one, but it's like a totally different size. Oh yeah. Yeah. If if it gets into like Milwaukee's coming out with the second gen. Yeah. It looks promising. If you're on a desert island, then yeah, only you know, only pick one. Oh, on a desert island. Finishing framing. What would you go with? I'll, I'll uh, use I, do I have a solar I panel. Use, I wouldn't use the airbow. Okay. Huh? Mine mine would be used as a weapon though. What? Because I'm on a deserted island. Yeah. Just, just in case there's anyone out there. Buddy. Okay. But you don't want to take the airboat. You're on the deserted island for eight hours. <laughs> and you have to frame and you have to put some security on. No, you know, take the airboat. I'm picture me on the, on the desert island and people are like, trying to kill me and shit. No, no, take the airboat. You can scuba dive out of there. <laughs> right, we're not getting any valuable information here at all. This is. <laughs> at the moment, it's just been Hikoki and Pazlo. What about you, Pato? They're all different, eh? Yeah. yeah. It's a hard one. I mean, at the end of the day, they all do the same job. I always like pest load, but now that I've used the airbow more, it's not just because they gave me a free one, but <laughs> <laughs> I do like it. I like it, yeah. It's yeah, much yeah. better to use. And what about the Hikoki? Sometimes you forget your airmust, you know, and, you, and with oh, the airbow, yeah. you don't get that pop either. True. Yeah, but the out. comfort of the, the pest load is always there because I'm so used to it. Mm. And the Hikoki is like, for me, I just don't like having to put a, push an on button, a lock button, all that. Here's my lock button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's too much. Every time True, I pick yeah. it up, it's annoying and it's heavier. Yeah. yeah, but like, I still like using it, and it, to be honest, it's because it sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like right. Yeah.